Hello everyone, glad to have you with me, CK Too Much here, back at it again in the world of Westeros with King Rob Stark, the Young Wolf of the North. And before we get started guys, please remember to like and subscribe, your support really helps me keep going. Uh, but alright guys, yes, so like I said, we are back in the world of Westeros, not with uh, King Robert Baratheon. We're doing a little bit of a pause on his series, but you'll see more episodes from him in the near future. But no, we're now doing something that I have always wanted to do on this channel, and that is a Rob Stark playthrough. So, um, I mean, how many of us got this mod so that we could give the Starks a happier ending? Uh, that's the main reason that I got this mod. Maybe you guys can let me know in the comments, but I'm sure all of you have done some kind of Rob Stark playthrough. And that's what we're going to be doing with this series. Uh, I am going to be making slightly better decisions for Rob you know, within reason, within keeping with his character, that I think will let him have the fairy tale ending that he kind of deserved. Um, so, all right, let's go ahead and take a look. We have a number of decisions that we need to deal with. So I am a skin changer, able to wear the skin of another with ease. Perhaps I should seek out others like me. I'm going to say no. Uh, I don't see the point. Um, you know, we don't have a POV chapter from Rob, so we don't really know the extent of his relationship with Grey Wind. Um, there is a very popular theory, which I also believe, that he went into Grey Wind's body when he died, uh, and then died again as Grey Wind, but, um, you know, he doesn't really talk about it, and his whole life is kind of, you know, taken up with politics and war, so that's just not something I would see him pursuing, maybe later in life, but for now, for now, no, he'll just have a very close wolf. <laughs> uh, okay. And then the next order of business is going to be this business with the Hornwoods. So the Hornwoods are uh, a family uh, right around here. And there's a bit of an issue with their inheritance. Ah, let me move these over a little bit. I feel like I'm on like, a Zoom call or something. Yeah. Uh, no, go away. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's better. Okay, so uh, Danella Hornwood is currently holding the seat. She's actually a Manderly, and she is the widow of Hallis Hornwood. Uh, he died in battle against Tywin. I'm not exactly sure where. Uh, it's possible that he died in the battle that Tyrion uh, was fighting in the, book, in the first book. Uh, and then his son actually died defending me. So he was killed by Jaime Lannister, who is now my prisoner, uh, defending me. So I really need to make a good decision here, and there's a lot of factors. So if I give it to the Manderleys, they will obviously be very happy. But that might upset some of the other vassals. Plus, you know, we need to do good by them. Rob's a good guy. He's an honorable guy. Um, there's another option where... Um, uh, hold on. I st <laughs> this other one is just not going away. Okay, there we go. Uh, so that's the first option, is giving it to Lady Danella. Uh, if that happens, the heir would be Wyman Lan Manderley. Uh, there's another option where we give it to Baron Talhart, and his mother is a Hornwood. She is the br uh, brother of Hallis Hornwood, the previous lord. And in my opinion, it should go to her. I don't understand why it didn't go directly to her in the first place. Um, but she has two sons. One is Brandon Talhart, which for some reason is not... Uh, he also has a strong claim on Hornwood, but I would be giving it to Baron for some reason. Uh, I like this option. Not going to lie. Um, it, to me, makes the most sense. But then there's one third option, which is where we give it to Larence Snow. And now he is the bastard son of Hallis Hornwood. Um... Now, I think Rob is sympathetic to bastards because, you know, his bastard brother, Jon Snow. And in the books, after Brandon and Rickon died, he even made Jon his heir. So I think he's open to that fact. But I think the best option is to give it to... I, I would give it to, actually, Brandon Talhart. But I guess I'm going to give it to Baron Talhart. And he will become a Hornwood in order to take this land. To me, that makes the most sense because it gets it goes to him through Barena Hornwood, and the Hornwood name gets to live on. Uh, this way, we get the Tall Hearts on our side, and we get a loyal, you know, very happy Hornwood uh, lord. 
and we don't overpower the Manderlies too much. I think giving it to that bastard, you know, doesn't really win us any allies. So, although it would make the Glovers happy, but I don't think that's a good enough reason. All right, now we get to the big kahuna, the big reason that Rob gets screwed in the end. So, yeah, my name is Rob Stark of Winterfell. I refuse to bend my knee before the Lannister imposters. They must pay for the murder of my father and the abduction of my sisters. Spurred on by my loyal vassals, I have been crowned King of the North and Trident, claiming back the ancestral birthright of my noble house from the corrupt and degenerate Iron Throne. Uh, now I must choose her queen to rule with me. I have been betrothed to Rosslyn Frey. However, in a moment of weakness, I laid with Jane Westerling, and she may be carrying my child. Do I risk angering the phrase to maintain her honor, or do I seek the best alliance to secure the war? Now, uh, you know, I'm sure all of it... So in the, in the show, they totally destroyed this plot line, but in the books, what happened was Robert was attacking the crag. I believe it's here. Oh, no. Yeah, he was attacking the crag. And while he was storming the castle, he took, I believe he took an arrow or he got wounded somehow. And he was nursed back to health by Jane Westerling. And, you know, they kind of got a connection. She was caring for him. Obviously, that stirred up a lot of feelings. And then it's possible that he got her pregnant. Now, later, that's confirmed because she is pregnant in the books. But when he gets married to her, I don't think he's 100% sure about it. Uh, so, uh, I honestly think that he made this decision very impulsively, and that if he had had enough time to think about it, if he had been able to talk to some other people, that he would have made a different decision. Because I think it's equally honorable to keep his promise to Rosalind Frey, as it is to Jane, and things could have easily gone down differently in making this decision. So I'm going to go with my original decision, and I'm going to keep my promise to the phrase. So that's the biggest diversion that I'm going to make here. All right, so now we can get on to the rest of the business. So ambition, win the war. That's the number one thing we have to do. And we'll make our focus the war as well. Um, and yeah, we'll go ahead and auto stop plots. Oh, I do also have a lot of new mods on. I don't know all of them. Some of them involve different claims that I can press and different sigils. Um, also, there's a few different provinces. For example, the Red Keep is a separate little province uh, attached to King's Landing, and it's only accessible through King's Landing. So that's kind of a nice little feature there. Uh, okay. And what else? Uh, I need a Master of Coin, and I think I will give that to... Sure, why not Winton? No. Is there anyone else? Hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll give that to the Maester of, uh, Master of Wintertown. And of course, Maester Lewin will be my Maester. Uh, okay, auto-assigned commanders. Uh, I will give the Regency over to my mother. I think she can be trusted with that job. High Almoner. Uh, I will give that to Mr. Joseph. And then I have a few other positions that I can hand out here. Um, Roos, I will give you Master of the Hunt. Uh, Mr. Umber, you will be my Master of Horse. Keeper of the Swans, I will give to Miss Barbary Riswell, even though she's not too happy with me. Her husband uh, died fighting Arthur Dane uh, on the orders of Eddard Stark, so. She's not too happy about that. Uh, okay. <clears throat> and yes, I need to... Brandon is currently being trained in diplomacy, basically. So I'm going to keep him doing that. I'll keep him with Maester Lewin. And he can continue to uh, work with him. Rickon, uh, we'll get you trained up as a warrior. And we will send you over to our uncle... Or, I guess, no, my, your granduncle, Brendan Tully. Uh, okay, and uh, I have some other things I need to give out. Yeah, wet nurse, 
Stark and Winterfell. That's a nice little feature. Give that over to Brandon. Tudor, give that to Mr. Maester Lewin and Cupbearer. I kind of want to give that to, like, one of my brothers, but I'm going to leave that open for now. Okay, so <clears throat> let's go ahead and raise our men. All right, so we got a big, nice army down here. Uh, we're going to have this led by Brynden Tully, and R Mage and I will be on the flanks. All right, so uh, we're sitting here at River Run, and I think the first thing that we ought to do is head on over to Heron Hall. This is a place where the Lannisters are able to operate uh, beyond, you know, behind our lines, and it keeps them in close contact with King's Landing. So I think it makes sense that we personally lead the attack there. And, you know, it, so yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And who knows, maybe we'll come across uh, a mysterious girl who looks a lot like Arya Stark. You never know. So we've got to keep our options open. But I think it makes sense that I might personally lead some troops there. All right. And next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and send these guys down to... Let's send them to Moat Kaelin. Uh, I feel like that's a pretty good gathering point. And then we'll decide what to do with them once they're all together, or mostly all together. Uh, but the Freymen, I will try to have them meet at Heron Hall, but I'll have to keep an eye on them. Alright, so we can go ahead and hit that start button after 11 minutes into the video. And yeah, so we'll see what happens. We're going to have a lot of events coming our way, so we should be ready for that. Alright, so Robert, I'm sorry, Stannis has come out and said that his brother left no true heirs and that Joffrey, Tommen, and Marcella are all bastards born to Cersei Lannister and Jaime Lannister. Now, I believe in the books and in the show, Robert says that Joffrey is the rightful king and that he just wants vengeance for his father and independence for the North. I don't think he really believes Stannis, so for right now, we'll say that that's not true. All right, King of the North, King of the North. Uh, okay, now the Greyjoys are coming. And a few other people are making some douches. Oh, that's right. And I have some prisoners. Excuse me. So Gavin of the Crag will put you into house arrest because I banged your daughter. Uh, Mr. Brax, I'm going to keep you where you are. Uh, Cleos Frey, I will put you in house arrest. And same with Tion because they're, they're Frey Lannisters. So, you know, I don't want to treat them too rough. I don't want to piss off Walder Frey. Oh, what's this? Jan John Royce writes of his shame that the men of the North and Riverlands have marched to war once more, yet the armies of the Vale do nothing. He swears by the old gods and the new that the men of the Vale are bound to the men of the North and the Riverlands by blood. Uh, because of the blood we shed in Robert's Rebellion, and House Aaron is bound to House Stark and House Tully by kinship. Uh, so... Excellent. All right, and House Royce, too, is bound by blood to House Stark, and he knew Lord Eddard well. He writes that the Vale should be marching to the aid of King Rob and the defense of River Run, not cowering in their castles. So he's going to do everything he can to make sure that Lord Paramount Robert, Aaron, and Lysa Tully will raise their banners. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, so maybe I haven't I've never had that event happen to me before. Maybe that's also part of my mods uh, But maybe he will be able to rally some support for us uh, Oh, okay. Yes, and this is also a nice little event here So Manderly this happened in the books as well wants to put together uh, a fleet for the north So I'll give him the coin to get that started and uh, they're going to need a lot of timber, so he's going to have to work pretty closely with Great John Umber to get that done. So, sounds good. Yeah. And uh, I will give Mr. Wendell Manderly the title of High Admiral while that's going down. <clears throat> All right, that's great. Oh, uh, okay. So, a number of ancestors acquired reputations for piety, convictions, and religious beliefs. Hmm. 
I honestly feel like this could go either way. Um, you know, I feel like the nature of the old god's religion, I, I just feel like you can't be very zealous about it. There are people who are like that, and they want to defend their traditions, but there aren't very many zealous old god worshippers. And Rob never really expresses much interest in it. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if he actually was believed in the faith of the seven. Um... And Zealous, I mean, this character burns with religious fervor and cannot tolerate heretics. That just doesn't sound like Rob. Uh, so maybe, you know, and he's had a kind of a rough life. Well, I mean, he, he has and he hasn't. You know, he grew up, uh, you know, in Winterfell. But his father and grandfather were both killed. Uh, his sister's been abducted. Both of his sisters have been abducted. His brother's been crippled. So maybe he would be a little bit of a cynic. I think that's more likely than being... Him being religious. Where is Mr. Clegane? Okay, he's in Lannisport. That's good. I don't I don't want him at Heron Hall. That would not be good for us. Uh, okay, so it looks like they had some bad intelligence or something. And they let their men go out to High Heart, and we were able to catch them. Okay, so we're off to a good start. Off to a very, very good start. Um, do I want a car Stark with me? No, I'm sorry. I don't think I do. I don't have the money for that. <clears throat> okay, so we're off to a good start. Uh, looks like we might also tango with the Brother Without Banners, but we'll see. Oh, okay, and we really can't handle the North right now. I'm sorry, uh, the Wall right now. In the books, Robert ignores... I'm sorry, Rob ignores them. So we're going to ignore them too for now until we're in a better position to t uh, help them out. Something's going on here. Okay, yes. That's weird. I feel like I kept assigning them, but they were disappearing. Uh, okay. So we're going to make our way to Heron Hall. Oh, as high as honor. What has happened here? News from blank. It seems the Vale has erupted into war. Lord John Royce, Jan John Royce of Ruinstone has declared that the men of the Vale are bound to the north and to the Riverlands. Ooh, interesting. So Lord Paramount Robert Aaron has refused John Bronze Royce's entreaties, and as a result, he has taken up arms with those that support him. Interesting. Okay. Um, <clears throat> well, that's interesting. So, yeah, I also don't think they're, they're very happy with the way that Lysa Tully and Littlefinger are kind of calling the shots. I'm sure they're not happy about that. I feel like that was almost happening in, in uh, the last two books, so very interesting. All right, and we can threaten Barbary Riswell to stay out of factions. Is she in a faction? I'll ask politely. I don't think there's a reason to threaten her at the moment. So did he join in with us? No. Oh my god, wow. They're all uh, war for the regency. Okay. Interesting. I'm having dinner with Lisa, some rando who was married to... Bruce of Bruce Harrow. I don't know who this is. And she wants me to talk about the old gods. Um, I don't think so. <laughs> I might be a cynic, but I don't think he would want to go into the occult. Okay. Very good, very good. <clears throat> oh my god, your grace, we have received word from the twins that a young woman there has made a claim to be Arya Stark. Praise the old gods, we thought she was dead, and now she gets to be married to Elmer Frey. Okay, so, little tongue-in-cheek there, but yes, we did get our hands on Arya Stark, so that is wonderful. Uh, oh, and look at that, using a smuggled-in rope, um, Jamie Lannister almost escaped. So let's throw him back into the dungeon, or should we throw him into the oblique? I'll just throw him back into the dungeon for now. But that gives me an idea. I should try to get Sansa out. 
by the same means. So let's see if we can plot to... I don't want to kidnap her. <clears throat> I feel like that doesn't make any sense, but... Um, yeah, I guess we'll quote-unquote kidnap her. Um, I have cheat codes on, so <clears throat> if I do manage to keep, like, you know, kidnap her, I'll use the cheat codes to, like, um, make her in my court, I guess. Because uh, I think if I do kidnap her, like, she won't understand that I'm her family and I'm rescuing her. So we can get Varus on our side. Uh, that'll make a big difference. Uh, I don't trust Pice. Oh, well, I don't know Picel. I'm oh, sorry, guys. There's like a alarm outside. One second. So Rob doesn't know Picel from Adam, um, but I personally don't really trust him because he's like a servant of Tywin. So I think we'll stick to Varys and Littlefinger, and that should be enough. Uh, Cersei. That doesn't make any sense. Okay, I'm not going to auto-do this, because that doesn't make sense that Cersei would help us. So I don't want to break character there. Uh, the Kettle Blacks also... Bronn would help us if we gave him money, and he knows Catelyn, so we'll do that. Uh, oh, and I should invite... Varys and Littlefinger. Okay. All right. So now that we have seen how much of a siege, how big of a problem the siege will be, I'm going to decide to move on and attack their army directly. So we're going to fight them here at Butterwell. And it looks like the Tyrells are going to have to come in and try to save them. Alright, so we do have a bit of a plot already underway to kidnap <coughs> Sansa. So that is great. Uh, and... We just need a few people. Bronn said he would be down, so I'll invite him. For the right price, he'd do anything. Okay, nice. So we're getting in a slow stream of Joffrey's men. While riding in your personal guard, you found yourself isolated and surrounded by enemy soldiers. A violent melee ensued, but you gave a good account of yourself and managed to return to the main body of your army in time to lead it to victory. Very nice. So songs will be sung of the victory at Butterwell. Good. So let's move on to Sow's Horn. And we'll keep destroying their armies as we go. Uh, let's go up north and take a look at what's happening here. Oh, I also have to keep my eyes on these guys. <coughs> so none of the Ironborn have landed yet, but they're just about to. And our guys are slowly marching south. Um, I'm still going to keep them at Moat Kalen, just because I don't really know what's going to happen. Um, once they're all together, I'll decide whether or not to send them north or send them south. Or keep them north or send them south. Okay, so some people are arguing about who should be in charge of the armies. So I'm going to use my diplomacy to smooth that over. Ooh. Yikes. So Captain Gylo of the Long Lances has been killed by me, or at least by my troops. Ooh, okay, so Para Ironsmith might try to out my plot. Uh-oh. Big yikes. Uh, oh, okay. So let's move on to King's Landing. Um, Stannis is probably already there. And I don't really want to fight him directly, so... Ooh, what's this? Um, okay, I think that's Stannis. But it's kind of hard to tell. Oh, no. Wait, where am I going? I'm going to... No! 
Okay, so it looks like we're going to walk straight into a fight with Stannis. <clears throat> I don't want to do that, but, you know, we do need... We are fight. We are technically our, are also fighting him, I guess, but I really don't... I'm fighting him one-on-one, -on -one too, which is kind of scary. Um, that would be interesting if we captured him. All right, so no, Mr. Lannister, you are going to stay where you are. Okay, so we've defeated... Stannis in battle, although that's not really what I wanted. Uh, and now we're going to go on to the Red Keep. Oh, and my small little army uh, was also defeated. And we'll also send them to the Red Keep. <clears throat> okay. So let's go ahead, guys, and set up in the Red Keep. And then I think I will call this episode for now. Uh, the Red Keep is a good place to be, it looks like, because it is protected by the river. Oh, look at that. Theonald of Halfway has distinguished himself in battle. Good for you. And it's protected by the river, uh, so hopefully it's pretty defensible, especially with Mr. Brynden Tully, who is a pretty epic commander. Okay, so it looks like uh, a lot of... Bad things are happening up north. I'm going to go take stock of that in a second. Once we get these guys all linked up together. Ah, crap. Okay. So these these 2,000 from the twins are really just unlucky. Okay. So, yeah, they're going to get defeated. Okay. So, yeah, it looks like the Ironborn are really starting to make a dent here. Uh, you know what? Um, let's move north. Let's go to Whitford. Maybe I can start to do something about these guys. Um, Alright, and we'll send Mr. Umber to heighten the morale. Alright guys, so thank you so much for joining me. In the next episode, we are going to hopefully capture uh, the Red Keep in King's Landing. And I think we will also send uh, these armies up here to deal with the Ironborn. So thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you guys in the next one.